Well, not surprisingly, after yesterday to rather late start to the day, it's about quarter past seven, we've got a very short jaunt today to Peaceful Bay. So just leaving Rame Head now. Uh, when I took the pack off last night, um, it was sore, my back. In fact, it took me quite some time to be able to find a comfortable position on the, the blow-up mattress in the hut. And it wasn't aided last night by the fact that not only were there a host of mosquitoes, there were even more little midges that just kept landing on your face and crawling along. So it was a bit of an interrupted sleep last night, but I did get a good few hours from about 1am onwards. It's very overcast today. Certain parts look like it's very threatening, but I don't think it's blowing in the direction to which we're walking. There's a little bit of walking on the beach today. We're sort of on a sand dune track at the moment, just making our way down towards the beachfront, but looking forward to a, a far easier day. It's gonna be 40 kilometers less today. I won't know what to do with myself. Thankfully these boardwalks are here. It does say in the guide that around this 0.5 kilometre mark for about a K can be inundated with water in winter, only up for about ankle high, but between some of these boardwalks there is actually still some mud and a little tiny bit of casual water at times. So if we're walking through here in its entirety, even at the moment, you need to be very, very cautious of your step and pace because there is still a little bit of wet, slippery mud around. And in fact, here comes a bit of casual water now, which we will be able to skirt quite successfully on the side of the track. But you can tell the height of winter probably would be a very damp around this part. This is a freshly cut area, but unfortunately everything's come straight down on the track, which doesn't actually make walking all that easy. A little bit of respite and then we're back into it again. It's so where you can actually easily get your foot caught and end up shutting your face.
Well, we've just come off the beach at Peaceful Bay and heading towards the caravan park and then we're onto our chalet. The news is not good. When I woke up this morning, I felt fine bodily. Same as when I got into camp last night, just tired. But somewhere early today, I've done something to my knee. The outside of my left knee is incredibly painful and every time I stop, it's incredibly sore and difficult to get started again. So I really don't know what the future holds. Maybe they'll have some ice. They've got a small shop here apparently at Peaceful Bay, which I'm gonna to have to try, but it's quite sore at the moment. In fact, it's agony at times. So I don't know what I've done. I don't know whether a night's rest will fix it. All I know is I'm bloody disappointed having come all the way back to try and complete this quest. Hopefully, there will be some decent news later today or tomorrow morning. Sitting on the veranda of the chalet just outside Peaceful Bay, when I say just outside, a walk of about 800, 900 metres from where we had fish and chips at the caravan park, which seems to be the centre of the universe here. Uh, the lady here that runs the chalets has been very kind. She's given me an ice pack, which is currently strapped to my left knee. I really have dire concerns now as to whether I'll be able to finish tomorrow, which puts a real dampener on having come back because I've now got a lot closer. It was 808 kilometres I'd done when I went away. Now I've done 878, so I'm getting ever closer to the finish line and tantalisingly may not get there. But we're going to assess in the morning. Potentially we could stay one more night here and cut back from two nights to one, mark, one night in Den Denmark, which would still get us to the finish line at the time that we had hoped to. But I do have dire concerns at the moment. I don't know how I did it. I don't know when I did it. It was feeling 100% when I left Rame Head, but somewhere along the track today, it's something's happened and it just became progressively worse and getting through the last two or three kilometres was uh, a bit of agony at times. So anyway, the legs up, resting on a cane chair, the ice pack is on and we'll just wait and see what happens. Quarter to six in the morning and we're just leaving peaceful bay and I'm sort of limping out. I've got to be extremely careful today. I've got the pole to use which I'm probably going to have to on anything that's got a major descent. Slept okay but the leg is still very very sore. No idea what it really is. When I stand still on it I can't feel anything. Sitting down you can't feel anything but it's when I'm walking and I trail my left leg behind me I can't really bend it without some really sharp pain so we're going to just take our time today we do have a inlet crossing at Irwin Inlet about eight kilometers into the day but we've got 23 k's all up most of it on the shore either on the beach or in dunes just above it but it is going to be a test of my resolve today I think as to how I actually get through this fingers crossed I will but I think I'm going to be going at a, a very very slow pace today and very ginger on my leg in particular on descent so I just can't afford to to twist it or wrench it or yank it or bend it too much either so we'll see how we go but, uh, about to get to the soft sand very shortly we'll see how it goes As you can see, it's the downhills that are really slowing me down with this knee. Flat is not so bad. Gentle uphill is okay, but it's the downhills that are really aggravating it. So I'll use my pole if it's steep. Unfortunately, we've had some steps to go up and down that have been built into the track. So it's pretty much steady as she goes today without any hurry. 
and just really pacing myself as best I can. It's a long day to Boat Harbour, about 24 k's or thereabouts, so I just have to be smart. So we're very lucky with perfect conditions with the wind blowing from left to right which will take us to the other side quite nicely. I like the sound of that Judith. And here's our shed and the good thing is we've got four canoes. I think there's six in total so there are some on each side. If you get to a place and there's only one canoe you've got to go over tether another one to the back, bring it back, and then go back again. So Jude is the expert when it comes to aquatic stuff, and I'm totally in her hands. So Jude's actually taking the two packs across first. As I mentioned, she's very adept at this. She's got her own kayak. She kayaks here, there, and everywhere. So she's going to do it that way, and then we'll both go, away, or go across together. Quarter to nine ferry services arrive right on time. Yes, and it's a lovely crossing, sir. Okay, all right. In I get then. Well, this is silver service, getting dragged up. Jude got her feet a bit wet, but I'm not going to get my feet. Congratulate. Now, what is the charge for that, the fee? Oh, that is priceless. <laughs> Thank you very much. An experience I've never had before. Three canoes on each side, so there's no need for Jude to make any additional trips. She's good enough to make two. The only problem for my knee is we've got a lot of steps here to get away from the river, which is not ideal. But we'll see how we go, hey?
so we made it. Just under 23 kilometres, or pretty much 23 even. A lot of climbing through the dunes. The great news was that the periods on the beach, it was very, very firm. It was some of the easiest beach walking you'd ever get, but this is Boat Harbour. It's named because just to the east there is a magnificent little bay. Apparently it's very safe for swimming. But here we are. Well, behind me is Boat Harbour, which is where our little campsite gets its name from. It is a very beautiful part of the world, there's no doubt about that. Oh, I'm glad today is over. I started it really along with Jude, not knowing what the future was, but was able to get through it, which was terrific. It was our slowest walking day by a long, long way. It was 23 k's, a lot of sand dunes, which we managed to negotiate. So I mentioned before, the, the beaches were pretty good, but uh, I think I'm over it now. Um, I still don't know what the issue is. It's some sort of ligament damage to the outside of my left knee, but getting through that today uh, gives me great confidence now that Denmark's two days away. We've got a, about 20 k's tomorrow to William Bay, and then from there the next day we're into Denmark for a rest day, our last rest day of this Bibbleman Odyssey. But yeah, there's a great sense of relief tonight. Um, gonna put the tent up, actually. There's no one else there in the, the big hut. There's another lady from uh, England who's put a tent up. But Jude, of course, has already got hers up because of her uh, aversion to mosquitoes. It's a pretty healthy aversion too because she gets attacked every single time. So I might put my tent up there as well and try to get a good night's sleep without the buzzing in my ears. But it's been a good day. A good day to be able to get here even though the knee still isn't 100%. Back on the track, it's just before 6 a.m. Had a good night's sleep because I put the tent up like Jude inside the hut, there was only the two of us in there. So I kept the mosquitoes at bay, there were plenty around before sunset, probably continued to be pests well after that. Knees better today, it's still quite stiff, hopefully it'll warm up a little bit, we're only just out of the campsite. But today we're off to William Bay, distance of around 20 k's, quite a bit of beach walking again. We're just heading down at the moment to the beautiful little bay boat harbour from where our campsite got its name. There is a forecast of rain today. Um, the worst forecast we've had actually since we set off. They're saying 10 to 20 millimetres. It's, we're getting varied information as to when it's likely to come in. Probably early to mid-afternoon. So if we can have a decent pace today, uh, we may even be able to beat it into camp, but we'll wait and see. We do have one little crossing today at Parry Inlet, but from what we've heard, it is pretty much closed, so we should be able to walk across that without uh, any issues or having to remove our boots. But it is a beautiful day again for hiking. It's overcast, it's cool, and as I said, the rain is forecast, but we just wait and see what time it actually descends upon us later in the day. But onward, upward and forward to William Bay. Just gone quarter past seven. We've already seen one big tiger snake on the track. There are snake tracks 
everywhere through here down the track for a little bit and then off to the side some just laterally where they've made their way across the path but uh, even at an early hour you still need to be a little bit diligent with them probably a little bit slower early in the morning before they get to heat up it's always a matter of scanning forward scanning back glancing left and right just to make sure that they have a clear path and more importantly you don't tread on one Jude had one day before yesterday it actually came out of a very narrow track and went between her feet at a great rate when she was walking so safe to say her heart rate just went up a spike at that time Coming up to Parry's Inlet now and just coming through a very nice caravan park. It's very well populated, given it's not school holidays or anything, but a lot of people are in here enjoying it. Shortly we'll find out the state of Parry's Inlet and see what it's like in regard to traversing to the other side. Hey. Well, those are Jude's footsteps and they are barely recognisable. When it comes to beach walking, you actually could not have much better than what it is here heading towards Parry's Inlet. Both of us, oh, about 12, 13 months ago, did the Cape to Cape and then we did half of it again earlier this year and around Hamlin Bay and Redgate Beach. And it was, to use the Australian vernacular, bloody awful. But both yesterday and certainly today, this is a magic carpet ride along a WA beach. Certainly nothing to complain about whatsoever. So we've passed over through Harry's Inlet, which is completely closed. And just continuing on Mazzaletti Beach here, quite a walk. We're on here for over five k's until we break left and uh, make our way through the dunes then up towards our William Bay campsite. Well, we've just stopped to put our pack covers on because the forecast rain looks like it's not too far away. The sky is incredibly angry up there behind the sand dunes. It may well be very soon we're going to get absolutely drenched down here on the beach. We've still got quite a distance to go to get off it. I don't think that's going to happen before the rain starts to fall, unfortunately. The wind's really whipping up as well, so not as favourable as when we first came down onto Mazzaletti Beach about an hour ago. Well, this is truly unbelievable, the ferocity of this storm. We knew it was going to rain today, we were told potentially 10 to 20 mils. But when we crossed past Parry's Inlet, the weather was quite sublime. Now all of a sudden, it is blowing a gale. It's almost, at times, pushing you sideways. We've still got about two and a half k's to go to actually get off this beach. And from there, it's up over sand dunes, so I'm not actually sure what's better. But these conditions are quite unbelievable how quickly things can turn down here on the coast.
to say it's a relief to get off the beach is probably a fair understatement especially this little nook just here where there is no wind that was quite some experience down there we've only got about 1.2 kilometers now that we've come off the beach to get to the hut the weather in actual fact has subsided quite a bit in the last probably kilometer and a half of that beach walk but the ferocity of that storm and the wind in particular when the first squall actually hit it was quite something just around 600 meters to go now I'm going to climb about 80 odd meters to the top of Tower Hill which is where our hut is for tonight looking forward to getting there and taking the weight off this knee which unfortunately on the beach wasn't aided by the camber so it's a, a lot sore than it was through the first 12 14 kilometers but certainly lived to fight another day it's nowhere near as bad as it was that afternoon the day before yesterday into peaceful bay Give us your thoughts on that, Judith. What? Where's Bear? Well, it started well, didn't it, today? Oh, I'll start that off. Um, this morning, the first part of the walk was amazing. I loved it. I loved the, just the cliffs views and the, the scenes. The only thing that wasn't nice is you keep looking back to Boat Harbour. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gone very far. But that beach would have been lovely if it wasn't for a squally storm. It was amazing how when oh. we went past the surfers near oh, Paris Inlet, it was magnificent. And then, woohoo! And then to finish off, climbing up a really big hill in a bit of plastic. Yeah, but, and again, I can't quite believe it. I mean, it's gone quite benign again. The forecast is for quite a bit of rain tonight. But anyway, we're going to get changed into our camp clothes after what was a very interesting day. Happily ensconced in the hut now after that uh, wet day today. There's still some rain falling on the tin roof and probably will do throughout the night. It was a good day today, uh, probably until we got to the back half of Mazzaletti Beach when all of a sudden, as we mentioned before, the heavens opened up and more importantly, or more traumatically, the winds almost blew you over sideways. Um, quite happy with the way my knee stood up today. It wasn't aided right at the end because the camber of the beach didn't really help. But this is a very nice hut. Jude's already got, as you've seen, her tent up. She's in there having a read at the moment. Tomorrow, we've just got 20 k's to roll into Denmark. So that will be our last rest day, the day after tomorrow. Uh, the thing is, we're gonna get rain in the morning though. It's been forecast to finish later tonight, but also recommence tomorrow and probably rain from about nine through until midday. So we'll be leaving probably as normal around quarter to six, six o'clock. So we are gonna to have to don the wet weather gear uh, to head into Denmark tomorrow. Plenty of birds around this little hut here, a lot of fantails. It's uh, really a, quite a pleasant view. Uh, there is no view from the hut itself though. You're sort of tucked down in a little valley near the top of uh, Tower Hill, but it's nice to be in here when the rain is falling from above. Look forward to a good night's sleep and then look forward to pressing on to Denmark tomorrow. <laughs> 